get to uh, physically change the world uh, as you play. Um, I got a thing to show. <gasps> I know. Show and tell. Yes. Show please. and tell. <laughs> we got we got we got some goodies, but so we'll start with the start with the cool thing. So uh, you, <gasps> some of you may have seen this before, right? Now caveats, everyone. This, of course, as with as always, this is a pr uh, this is a uh, not prototype. even a pre-production copy. This is a prototype. Uh, at things are subject to change. We are in the middle of development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the stuff Cor we're supposed corporate to say. Corporate disclaimers, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Show Just me the stuff. Show me the stuff. Here's <laughs> the stuff. So this this is a board. All right. So um, this is the uh, this is the a, a slice of the world of Trudvine. Um, now something something cool that you uh, may see uh, on this is um, our, our thing. You have these little pockets. Hello. Now, this is not something that will normally go there. I'm just showing you a placeholder. But uh, a big part of the game is that as you guys play, um, the, the changes that you make in the game will have permanent impact and will change the board from game to game. So even as you play a new story, changes that you made in other stories, even if it's unrelated, are going to have an impact on, uh, on your current game. So we'll take that out. Hello. And so that's one board. This game loves big tables. <laughs> There's another board. Um, so this is the sideboard that's going to go on the side. That's going to keep track of the. It's going to keep track of the stories, the uh, some of the legends that um, that characters become. Um, also, story big big story beats that have happened, to big turning points in the mythology. And even it's going to keep track of the turn sequence of the game itself, which will change dynamically as the stories go on. Uh, everything that is in a pocket can and will change. So we'll talk more about that later. Um, there, uh, it is a story-driven game, very, very clearly a story-driven game. This is a uh, this is just a mock-up. Um, th we actually made this specifically as a demo. Um, as a demo, this is not. Uh, there are no spoilers in here that are actually going to be in the game. This is something that is a prequel to the uh, to the big story that's in the game. So anything we spoil, not in here, and we're not going to spoil anything that's in here. Um, so the game is very story driven. You're going to have a, a big story book with uh, with page entries that are going to tell you. Uh, they'll give you lore. They'll give you instructions for the um, they'll give you instructions for the game. What to set up for that particular game. Um, there are at least 30 big stories in, uh, in the storybook that you get to play. The goal of every game is to get a, uh, to play is to get a heroic ending out of the story that you have. And every story has multiple heroic endings. A heroic ending will unlock a new story for you to be able to play. Um, and uh, so you, as you sort of wind your way through our narrative, you are the way you guys play this is going to be very different from the way another group is going to play this as they make different choices. There's zero chance you're going to run through all of the content in this book on one playthrough. So if you pack it up, reset, and start again, you can make different choices and have a very, very different game experience. That's the short version. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we're, uh, we're come on, right? So, well, th you saw the map. <laughs> Here are the dudes. <laughs> dudes and or dudettes. Right? So here's a couple of characters. Right? Look at that. Is that like in focus? Is that out of focus? All right. They're on the table. Right. There's a couple of our heroes. There's a here's a bull troll. Rawr! I have horns. Right? <laughs> a bull troll, sir. <laughs> we got to keep in keep in world, right? And of course, rar. <laughs> oh, right? You can't. You can't not have a dragon. Um, a uh, a logi worm, which is the uh, what's the name of this in the background? Um, he shows up in the v at the very beginning of the very first story you play. Uh, logi worm from from legend. Like these things were supposed to be legendary, and um, the. Uh, the bear, the forebearers of Ragnarok. The story starts with, boom, I'm on the map. Um, and they're great. They have, um, we, they have, uh, they have a stat line like everything else. This guy has infinite, infinite health, infinite attack, and if it's on your space, you're dead. You don't get to fight him for now. <laughs> so since we're talking a little bit about combat, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a question that came in. 
So is there, and this is from Bobby, so thank you, Bobby, for chiming in. Will there be any direct player conflict inside of this game? Uh, player versus player? No. This is this game is cooperative hero. This is a game of cooperative heroism, right? Um, you guys are, you guys are literally trying to save the world that is going into progressive disharmony as the story progresses. So, um, now, as in uh, as in many RPG in a box type games, um, there will be a like there's room for disagreement, right? Like, uh, there, uh, there's enough depth and enough crunch to a game where you guys might reasonably and rationally disagree on which choices we're going to make, especially as you start getting uh, to the conflict of, well, personal advancement versus story advancement, or my personal advancement versus yours, that can happen. But for the, your motives are pure. You wanna save the world. Um, we have, th there's, the world is has grit to it, but the story is not gritty. <laughs> and then another question from Jim at Locust0311. Thank you, Jim. Hello, Locust0311. <laughs> Hi, you're right here in the room. Did um, you text <laughs> us a question? <laughs> yes, yes. That's oh, how okay. we're, yeah, we're, we're doing them all, all streamed through here. I have, I have the power, Eric. All right. I have the power. Um, what differentiates Trude Vong from other recent or upcoming storytelling games? What oh really boy. makes this one All unique? Right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm going to answer that. Uh, I'm going to answer that in a in a uh, in a very uh, in a sort of a political way. In the sense, I'm going to go around it first and then answer the question. So, um, my background. I'm an old school RPGer, right? Uh, I grew up on D and D Second Edition. I played every role playing game out there. I played uh, uh, like um, World of Darkness, Cyberpunk, uh, everything by Artel, uh, James Bond by TSR. Like I played, I played. If it was published in the '90s, I made it. Uh, I made it. I played it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Retcon history. Um, so, but that's my background, right? The um, now this game is uh, this game was is co-designed with a uh, with a team. This is the biggest design team we've ever had for a game because this game is so huge. I designed with our own Fel Baros, who you guys uh, you guys know from Narcos and from uh, and from uh, Gekido, uh, Tola and um, Fabio. Sorry, <laughs> Fabio is his actual name. We just call him Tola. Um, and yeah. Jordi Adan and uh, our own Guillerme Goulart, who's come to some mini Simon expos before. Uh, it's a huge team. Like this, it's a video game sized team for a video game sized project. Um, most of us have RPGs in our past, so this the, the point of this game is to um, let us sort of filter our love of uh, what RPGs are like into this new medium. So, to the question, uh, how is this different from storytelling games um, out there right now? I played a lot of them that have come out right now, and um, they are. Uh, so I, I, I say this with the greatest of love, right? They're D&D &D simulators, right? They're, you, you go, you dungeon crawl, you advance your character, you kick down the door, kill monsters, get gold, right? That's great, I love that, right? Um, this is a little bit more of an indie RPG approach. The focus of the game is story. You are uncovering a massive story. Now, of course, there's gonna be character advancement, uh, but the main goal is what you guys are, you are trying to almost manage the world of Trudebung as you are playing. This is a very much a board game. Um, it is a mythic scope board game, so time is measured in beats rather than in rounds, right? It takes just as long to travel halfway across the world as it would like to punch a bull troll so hard in the face that like all future bull trolls will be born with one eye. Like that, like, <laughs> like it's, it's that m sort of mythic scope, right? And if you can get into that, right, and it's all about big story moments, big world changing moments, that's what this is about. It's about making your character's impact on the world and you can see it. Um, I haven't, I played a lot of games like this. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a game that has that kind of scope like that. That's what we're, um, that's what we're going for. So if you like that, if you like the idea of, it, of a sort of very uh, indie personal, I want to change the world uh, game, this one will be for you. The closest comparison that I've actually come to is um, if you guys have played, has anybody played like uh, MMOs, like the old school MMOs from like, like from like Meridian 59, Ultima Online, uh, right, like the, the like the old school ones where you guys that are focused on you, the character actually changing the world around you, and other people get to see the changes that you made. That was a lot of the inspiration behind a game like this. 
um, except that you're not doing it with thousands of players that are going to gank you in the forest. You're going to do it with four. <laughs> you're going to do it with four players that that have uh, that want to have fun with you. Awesome. So next question. This one's from Caleb H at Boardbeard. Thank you for chiming in, Caleb. When creating a game that is legacy-ish, how do you balance storytelling with potential replayability? Um, we. Short answer: We don't. Um, the long answer: um, We w we want to we want to tell a really really cool story that is driven 100% by players' actions and players' motivations. So, and introduce enough complexity into the story that you have no choice but to make mutually exclusive decisions that are going to change the face of they're going to change the cadence, the face, and the uh, and the texture of the game. So, if you come back and even make most of the same choices but just deviate a little bit you're going to have a different experience we were very we were just focused on telling a great story um let me talk about uh, what, what i mean by telling a great story right this is not a game where you're going to flip through a book and just go "Ooh, what cool st what happens next right <laughs> this story is um as a player i'm very selfish right i i'm like thank you for your wonderful artistry thank you for your great prose but what does that mean to me like what is how is this going to make me feel awesome and that's a lot of the vision behind this game, right? It's about, it's, we have a cool background, we have a cool story, but we want that story to be a vehicle for which you get to change things. Um, very specifically, um, so like with a lot of games, right? Like with all these type of games, we have lore text in our game, uh, which is very, very well written by our own Eric Kelly. Um, the, um, what we did with this game is that we loaded the flavor text in this game as well. So like, it's not just like, oh, I got to read a bunch of paragraphs of text and then go play a board game. It, by reading the text, by reading the flavor text and paying attention to it, um, paying attention, looking, look for foreshadowing, look for um, we we put in hooks, uh, hints, hooks, red herrings, all that stuff. If you read it, you will have an advantage over uh, a group that does not read the flavor text. Uh, especially if you guys like arguing over the subtextual meanings of what we wrote. <laughs> I love doing that. Um, and then the next question I'll go ahead and field, and that is, will, will we be able to demo this game here? And the long and short of the answer is no. no. However... Um, we will have it with some time on the prototype table, um, so it won't really be a demo, but you'll get to sort of see it, feel it, get some of the experience of it. But right. it's it's such it's it's a very small taste, right? Of, right. Of the larger picture, but yes. So we will have it. I would look on the prototype table for probably Sunday-ish is when we'll most likely have right. it up there. And it the will not be separate from this fine gentlemen here <laughs> well so the, so the reason for that is like because it's such a narrative game and it's there's so many spoilers in this um we've kept very careful control over this we haven't even shown other people in the company this right so uh it yeah you bet it's going to stay with me all the time and we can't just leave it on the table um like i made sure not even to publish a rule book here like we have it internally we're not going to show it out here we want you guys to discover it piece by piece as we uh, uh a as we uh, demo between now and the kickstarter um, be happy to talk forever, though, about the, the background, the design decisions that we made, and even give you guys a little taste of like some of the mechanics. Awesome. Um, yes? Uh-huh. When I was looking at the <coughs> game, it brought me back to Power Rangers with the Young Avengers and all the details and everything like that. That's what it means to come up with like three or four pages of knowledge that you ignored special to do something here. We have a question from the audience right now. A little bit. A little so bit. Now. So, sorry, I'm going to interject for a minute for the folks online. Oh, to Just answer Reese's yes, question. Um, no, 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 no. You're totally good. You're totally good. Um, so, so the, the question ultimately is, um, sorry, do you mind repeating the first part of it? It. How, how does this compare from, from an experience of a choose-your-own-adventure book? Right. How so what is this like? So we did draw some, of course, like, uh, so I also grew up on choose-your-own-adventure books, right? Especially fighting fantasy books. Like Steve Jackson, the Living Stone, love that stuff, right? Skill, stamina, luck, right? All right. Um, <laughs> but the, 
so there's some inspiration um and it was a it was a starting point we've deviated a lot from that and you'll know you won't notice it immediately when you play like i said it's not a it's not a paragraph book where you just go from paragraph to paragraph you are playing a board game and make your decisions are going to be um are going to be played out on the board but the story the way that the greater story branches out between session to session the decisions you make in one session will lead you to one particular branch or another um it's m but it's less about try to find the correct ending amount among 20 it's make a bunch of choices that you uh, m of mutually exclusive choices throughout the story to help navigate you toward an ending that you want for the story um now there Having said that, there are bad endings in this, right? Like, the goal of the game is to get a heroic ending, but it's a co-op game. Co-op games are hard, and we want you to lose, right? That's, that's, um, that's how we evil designers think about it. But <laughs> So you will get, like, if, if, um, if you die, if any player dies, you're, you are, story's over, and you got to start over. Um, there are also catastrophic endings that you can get, disastrous endings that will also change the world for the worse. Um, a bad ending, but you know what? If you usually will be able to trace your way back through it, like read, like oh, that was foreshadowed in story number, in story number five, title redacted. Um, <laughs> um, and maybe we should have done this way. So like, but like you, you'll usually be able to track back like where where you went wrong. Um, but for the most part, it's about like how do we get the ending we want out of this? Awesome. <coughs> I'm going to take another question from online, and then I'll get to you guys after that. Um, all right, Caleb at Board Beard. How many hours, pages of writing are in this story? I don't even know. If How many hours, pages? I don't even uh, know if we have that yet, because it's so it's a big vast book. at this point. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's <laughs> a big book. Um, I don't. I don't feel comfortable saying how many pages is right now, but mainly because the book is still in develop. Like we right. are still in development, right? And like the game, the game is done, right? But the the amount of content that we're uh, we're generating is is huge, and we're still uh, and we're still working on that, right? Um, let's just say it's big. It's uh, it's big. There are I can safely say that there are at least thirty different stories in this. Um, like each story is a session, and um, they interconnect in crazy way. As a, each story is more than one page. Right. Right. All right. We had a question over here in the back. Are the story elements delivered through the book or in a combination? We have a question from the audience. All yes. Right. <laughs> so, um, so this so this is one of the ways that this game is a little bit unique, right? Um, ultimately. At the end of the day, you'll be able to look at the board, the state of the board in any given time, and be able to sort of, uh, especially for the, the owner of the game, who's like, I, I, I liken to like the lore keeper of this particular game, right? You'll be able to like, oh yeah, I remember back in story two, title redacted, that we accidentally let this area burn down because we d decided not to help the elves, and we decided to help the dwarves instead. Sorry about that. Um, like the so there are elves and dwarves? You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I'm using Tolkien-esque language to mask everything um, in that story. I'm being very careful to not spoil because uh, my team will kill me. Um, but um, like, so you'll be able to look at the board and be able to sort of see a history of what's going on. Um, but the 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 storybook, the storybook itself, this is the storybook will drive you forward in any individual story that you play. So in one session you are going to get the every story is going to have a beginning and a middle and an end and the storybook will walk you through like these are the you have to read through the flavor the flavor text look for hints and it will tell you how to set up the board it'll tell you how what how to move um it will navigate you toward an ending for that particular story an ending not the ending there are multiples um but at the same time the echoes of stories past are going to be affecting the board that you're playing so you are always going to be like, y even though you're on one story, you're going to be dealing with the consequences of other stories that you've played. Fantastic. And I think, didn't, did we have another question back here? Hi. We have another question from the audience with this. He's talking about uh, Can you rephrase the question? Um, oh, uh, or I can rephrase. Oh, did you rephrase the question? Go ahead. 
Oh. Yeah, we, we've got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a way to save the uh, to save the game state between games? So, here's my thousand word answer. She's doing it for the folks online, so we're good Great, to go. okay. Yep, sorry. So, <laughs> um, so, single pl so this game is absolutely single player playable, of course, right? Um, so to a degree, to some degree, I'm gonna speak in the broadest of abstracts, all, most co-op games can be played single player because the goals are, um, the goals between uh, um, single player and multiple players are very similar, right? The, um, we generally, only put single player like wh what we print on the box is what we believe is a good player experience so if we will not make a game that so we won't write solo playable if we don't think it is it's different right it is different so um it's you can sit there and play it uh play through the story by yourself and enjoy that you get to make all the decisions and you don't have to compromise with other players and you can sort of navigate your way through the story but you um the one thing you'll miss is that you will miss that 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 dynamic of in that inner player dynamic of like my short ter my short term goals don't necessarily align with yours. Like how are we going to negotiate through that? Right? They're just different playing experiences, um, and it's the same. Like, uh, I mean, I was going to say it's the same as a role playing game, but you can't really play an RPG one player. Um, this you can absolutely. Um, and it um, from a store like from a discovery standpoint, like um, discovering all the cool uh, plots, plot twists and turns that we put in here, you absolutely can do that one player. Um, the game scales very, very well. Um, we, we think about scaling very early in every design. Um, this one especially. Um, the, gales, the game scale, I'm not gonna, I'll never say perfect because I'm a designer, but the game scales quite efficiently between player counts. And it does so on an individual level. So not on a campaign level, but on an individual story level. So it is actually very easy for players to jump in and jump out. Um, the only person that we generally recommend, like the, the host, the person who owns the box, is usually the constant. So it's, you'll ha enjoy most of your, if you always play your own game and don't lend it out to other people <laughs> to play the story, you'll come back like, what happened to my board, right? As, and, and to a degree, one of the things that really attracted me to this game is that like, I love the idea, personally and selfishly, of this box that I've got, where I get to tell cool gaming war stories that have a visual aid component to it. Right, like remember that time when we blank the blank <laughs> on blank and instead, oh, and then blank happened. It was terrible. But you can see over here that blank, we solved it by blank. One, and I'm a big fan of the, the swapping players in and out, right? Because that's always my issue is getting a consistent group of people every week right. or every twice a week to sit down and play a game. Whereas somebody's traveling or, you know, we have a smaller, larger group on various that's occasions. That's right. Like that's... For me, that's really big. That's right. pretty cool. Like, of course, you, there's some advantage to having continuance between a, uh, your character, right? But then you might decide, like, if if you want to be the one who plays Valerian the Bard, right? Then you'll be like, you know what? Nobody else can play him. Let's, let we have more characters. Other people can play them, and you can come back later uh, and enjoy your path to legendhood. But it, we don't require the commitment that it must be the same group from beginning to end. All right, all right. So I have, I have another question online, and then I have a question that I think is the one that you've been waiting for. Oh, wow. Um, so, so the first question, we'll do that, this one first, is from Dharma Ramos. Thank you for joining in. Can you fail in the storyline, and how far back do you start over if you do? That's the question I've been waiting for. All right. Oh, oh I, mis I misjudged. Well, there may be more. I mean, <laughs> I, I love questions. So um, – I need to think for a second because I have to answer this without spoilers and broadly. So think of it this way. Um, when you play the game of Trudvon, you're going to open the storybook and you're going to have a number of stories that you've unlocked. Uh, we start with one. There's only one story you can play when you start playing this game. Um, remember how I said before, the goal of the game is to get to a heroic ending. What the heroic ending does is it unlocks new stories. So when you play the game, at any point, you can open the box, you can open the you can open the book and just say, I want to play this story, anything that you've unlocked. Um, now, 
often, and if you're a discovery-oriented person, not just, oh, I want to move on and find out the next thing, you're going to play the newest thing you've unlocked. But there is some merit to going, oh, I want to go play this other story that we unlocked like four sessions ago. I want to make some different choices and see if, uh, especially if you see like, oh my god, we let like we let blank burn a little bit too long. I think I want to try to go back to that story and try to undo some of the damage that we did. It is absolutely a viable choice. So um, the generally what's going to happen is uh, the, the game has a very, very complex... Uh, the game itself is super simple. We'll teach you in like five minutes. But the 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 but he the points to me for that, by the mm. way. So, but the the but the the story, like the 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 backstory, but uh, the the backstory, the 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 story that you play through, becomes pretty complicated, uh, complex to weave through, and there are so many ways that it can end. It's up to like it's up to you how you want to judge how it ends. And basically, your own victory condition, at least for me, is like, did I end the way I wanted it to end, right? Um, th we are not going to make you go through a thirty sessions like like a thirty story game and go, oh yeah, you failed. Everything sucks. <laughs> you're terrible. Um, <laughs> we're going to give you lots of that on along the way. Trust me. Like you're going to play and you're going, oh my god, what a disaster. And then, um, but we'll give you a chance to go back and try to fix it if you can. Um, but the um your chance like i said open a book pick a story play so it's even though the the story is linear you will be able to go back so you can almost think of them as save points awesome awesome and um the question that i think you've been waiting all for. right here we go all right um, this is from Captain Stitch. How will combat work in the game? Yeah, I was waiting for that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So this is the part where I get in trouble, but it's all right. So please remember. Show and tell. Oh, show and tell. Show please and tell. remember at all times this game is this is a prototype. It's a work in progress. Yada 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 yada. Right. Yeah, all that stuff. All that stuff. Right? <laughs> We're. We are a publicly traded corporation. I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's supposed to say that. I'm obliged. But, but he's just much better behaved than I am, so. Uh, <laughs> and I've also gotten in trouble. So. <laughs> he's gotten in trouble Many more times. than I have. All right. <laughs> cool. Awesome. It's aimed at these minis? Yeah. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, when can you guys see this? Yes. I love it. All right. This is a character sheet. Um, do you, uh, could you be my Vanna yes. White for this? Awesome. All right. Character sheet. So that's a character <laughs> board. I love moving things closer. <laughs> How's that? All right. So I take direction. I'm like Keanu Reeves. All right. So, um, <laughs> so this is uh, this is <coughs> vulgar. The m I, I brutalizes. I'm sorry, Riot Minds. I'm not good at pronunciation. This is Volgar the Warrior. He has a uh, he has a character sheet, a char uh, character card. We're going to put that over here. Um, Volgar has uh, weapons, armor, and skills. They are going to go on, he has a rusty axe, which is going to go into his, to his hand. He has the block skill, which is going to go into his skill box. And he has the bash skill, which is going to go into his skill box. Um, uh, for purposes of Rhea demonstrating, we'll give you a different character. So we can we're splitting our attention between the UK and here. We love you both. <laughs> you are all important to us. That's right. <laughs> there you go. So for you guys, right there's your. We're going to show you the ranger, with his reflex skill, his crossfire skill, his rusty bow skill. Um, Sweet. I love being the right. ranger, by the way. And there, b there are the course there are women. There are badass women characters in this too. We. Uh, yes. Uh, we're very mindful of that so um, uh, I just was only instructed to spoil a very small number of characters so <laughs> um, <laughs> all right you guys want to fight something yeah let's fight something all right all right let's fight something this is vulgar roar right I'm a dwarf <laughs> so vulgar is over here he's on the l imagine if you will that this is a board all right he's over here and uh, this is a uh, this is a Draugr, a very uh, uh, crazy undead. Now, what I didn't say before in, um, is that the uh, like there's a lot of cool plastic in the game. Of course, it's a come on game, right? Um, one of the cool things about this game is that we got to 
like the characteristics of all the monsters and all the denizens of Trudon are going to advance as well, right? The story is, as, is also a bit about them. So like, it's not like, oh, Draugr's always do this. Like, yeah, they do that to start, but depending on the choices you make in the story, they are actually going to evolve. It's a, it's a mythic thing, right? Um, uh, nope, I'm not going to spoil I almost spoiled it. <laughs> I, almost spoiled it. <laughs> I could hear in the back of my head my team going, Eric, stop it. <laughs> All right. Um, is it Guile back there? Uh, yeah, he, oh, he's already. He's, he's <laughs> in pain all, every time I'm on camera. <laughs> um, so let me see. Let me do one. I just need one more guy here. Because it's two is always better than one. So there's two. There's two minis over here. And in fact, here Rhea, you can simulate if you want. I get something to play with. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You can you can show our our team here. Actually, I'm gonna put it a little more. Sorry, guys. I have to dig for the spoiled way. miniatures. I gotta get the right ones. So you guys can see it a little bit more. Because I can't show you anything that is not part of our demo. And and those of you that are physically here, what? We'll be around and show some of this stuff a little bit. Yeah, after absolutely. The panel feel, please too. feel free to come out here. Um, right. So, le go. less questions, but we'll we'll show stuff at that point. Whoops! Spoiler alert. Oh. Oh. Dual wielding. My, my team, favorite. My team is so angry. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right. Oh, this is so my character. It it kind of is actually. Yeah. It kind of is. Um, she's pretty. She's kind of badass. I like her play style. I just I'm not good at it. <laughs> um, uh, you'll see why in a moment. So imagine if you will, so Rhea's gonna sort of uh, uh, mimic what I'm doing here. So you got um, your, your character here, you're in a space with two Draugrs, right? You're gonna have to fight. Characters can fight together, they can fight as a group. Uh, I'm just gonna do an individual combat to show you. Now, of course, this is a tiny slice of the Trudong universe. It's not, a, it's not an all combat game. Combat is something you're gonna have to manage along with everything else, right? It's not only about combat, it's also about the consequences of w uh, what you choose to fight, how you choose to fight, and what happens as a result of that combat is just as important as the combat itself. But fighting is fun, so let's do that. So, Volger has a uh, has a bag of runes, It's right? It's Trudvang, it's set in the Norse mythology, so there's runes, of course there's runes, <laughs> right? Um, Wilger will tell you here how many, the makeup of how what types of runes are in the bag. There's wind, air, uh, wind, air. There's uh, wind, <laughs> fire, water, and earth runes. And there's also <laughs> demonic runes. So he has these, he has this makeup of runes, so you can always just tell what you've got in your bag. So here it is. Um, this is not, that's focused, I can tell. So, um, I want to fight these two Draugrs. Um, combat will go on until uh, one party is destroyed. Um, either the player or the uh, or the monsters or the combat ends if the player gets away, retreats from the combat. So, um, you guys can help me. You can make some decisions with me. All right. So, every round, you guys. Uh, every round, the first thing you got to do is decide: Do you want to fight or do you want to retreat? Do you want to try to get out of there? We just started. We're gonna fight, right? Of course, we're gonna fight. <laughs> of course, we're gonna fight. So, uh, oh, I should say one more thing. Uh, Volger has ten health. All right. That's important because health is what keeps you alive. Um, so, what we're going to do, we're going to fight. So, uh, you're going to make an attack against these monsters. Uh, and the goal of an attack is to try to kill as many monsters as you can before they kill you. When you make an attack, you're going to pull runes from your bag one at a time until you decide you want to stop. So, let's pull a rune from our bag and see what happens. All right, I pulled, oh, look at that, I pulled a demonic rune. Um, so, whenever you pull a rune, you have to, you must assign that rune to any ability that you have or to your failures. Uh, demonic runes always fail. Sorry, man. So you must put it in the first available fail slot. Now, nothing happens in the first available fail slot. We're fine. Now, there's another one here. I'll talk about what happens in a sec. You guys want to pull again? Yeah, I want to pull again. You guys are heroic. So you're in the spirit of this. You're heroic, right? All right. I pulled an earth rune, a green earth rune. So I can assign this to either my block skill, which has a space for an earth rune, or I can assign it to bashing, which has three spaces for any type of rune. If you fill in all, if you fill in all of those runes, you get to do that ability. So if I fill in block, which only takes one earth rune, I get to prevent one incoming damage later. If I fill in bash, I get to do, I need three runes to fill in that. I get to do two damage to monsters. Uh, fire, uh, my rusty axe, which is only powered by fire, I have two attacks. I can do one rune for one, damage or two runes for three. Note there are only two uh, fire runes in my bag. So what do you guys want to do? Do you want to uh, uh, block preemptively or do you guys want to start uh, bashing? 
I like I <laughs> like course, you. Of course, of course. Let's note, <laughs> let's note there are three slots on the bash card. All right, want to pull again? Yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Here we go. Fire. There's now there's two places I can put fire. I can put on my rusty axe. I can start. I can guarantee one damage, or I can hold out and try to go for three damage if I get two of them, or I can put it toward bash. I'm gonna let you guys make the choice. Axe. All right. Ooh, do you want to do one? Do you want to do the easy, w the easy one damage, or do you guys want to push and go for two damage? Not guaranteed yet. Push. No. Do the damage. I mean instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah. All Woo. right. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna put one on. Uh, we're gonna put on one damage. Now remember, there's only one more fire rune in here. So if we put on another fire, it's not gonna do much. It's all right. It's all right. We got this. It's like imagine the dog on fire. That that little memes like this is fine, right? <laughs> so now um, I I'm gonna stop for a moment before we pull again. Um, none of this is gonna resolve yet. This uh, it resolves when we decide to stop pulling runes, or we get three failures. Once we get three failures, if we get three failures, it cancels all of our successes. We're not going to succeed in any attacks, and we only resolve our fails. So, want to pull? This guy has four. Four out of eight. Ten. <laughs> All right. Again, pull. All right, pull, pull. I have an earth rune. I can put this onto bash. Okay, you don't want to block? You guys are, all right. <laughs> just just to let you guys know. Very accurate. Just to, well, Volker is a tank. I'm just letting you know, right? Like, he's, he's pretty good at block. That's all right, but what's your game? You guys go ahead. <laughs> all right, one, all right. All right, now here's, uh, well, we'll get to, all right, we're gonna pull again? Yeah, yeah let's do this. Demon rune, number two. Uh -oh. All right, now. The fail, the second fail state. This has a little icon on it, right? It has a little runic icon. So um, the 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 druggers, they have stats. You'd imagine, right? Um, on the board here, there's a bestiary, right? And this uh, this contains what the current stats in the story of every monster out there. Of course, they're going to evolve and change over time. So the drugger, they have um, they have they do two damage each. Um, they also have uh, two health each. They also have uh, two triggers up here. So we'll say like this guy will deal one damage when you uh, when you hit the first fail state. So we don't have to resolve it yet, but we're we've got an automatic damage coming in. So now my question to you guys is: We've got one locked in damage. We got one more toward a bash. However, um, there's two more there's two more demon runes in here. What do you want to do? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. It's not scripted, guys. Uh, Demon rune number three. Uh, <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. If, 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 if you were a better player, if I was a better player, I would have drawn the right rune, right? Uh, yeah, so of course. We failed. Th we failed this round. So all of our successes, chow, back to the box. That locked in damage? No. But we now have to resolve. I took a damage uh, from the drugger. So we did nothing. Now, if there was another player here, they'd also be simultaneously drawing from the bag. And you guys get to discuss between, like, like all right, like what are we going to do? But now that the round is over, the two druggers... They are going to each. They're going to pull up their damage. They're going to do four damage divided among every, we the way we want among anybody in the group. Now I was by myself. Sorry, Rhea did. <laughs> Rhea was not helping me. She's too busy like <laughs> cutting up dragons. Like oh, I forgot I died. <laughs> um, I'm too busy not drawing the wrong tokens. <laughs> right. <I'm just> saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So I'm going to take four damage. Boom. <laughs> uh, I, I play fair, kids. I play fair. <laughs> um, so. Now, I just want to go back just one quick sec. Now, if, if say I didn't draw a Demonic Rune, I drew another Earth Rune. That's great. I could put it here or here. Once I've done this, I've locked it in, um, not only Demonic Runes fail, it's any rune that you cannot assign to a success. So, e so now I've like, now all I have in this particular case, I would have only had Fire Runes left. So that means even from that point on, even Wind and Water Runes would also fail. So that's the thing you got to keep track of. The, the rule is you must assign. So it's very important for you to decide when to stop. 
right? That's the core of it. You now know how to do combat and truth bomb. Of course, there is infinite amount of depth and uh, complexity and cool new stuff you get to use new uh, runes for, but that's that is the basis of combat. And, and I think we've touched on this a little bit here and there, but uh, Base Prime Studio asks, do the ba do the game mechanics change over time? Yep. <laughs> now, I want to be clear. Um, the goal of the game is the... So this is not... It's not like a legacy game where you're like, where we're, you're like oh, it's a co-op game, and later it's not a co-op game, right? It's, like, it's not th like that. Um, what we did, we concentrated on building a very, very solid, simple, intuitive foundation, and it's mostly depth and different hooks for the uh, what we have now. There are surprises in there, of course, right? Um, and the game will behave differently over time, but that's all about twists. Awesome. And question over here in the back. Oh, it was the same question. Awesome. Over here. Are we going to be able to upgrade our character as we play, or is it going to um, be so like Rise of Moloch? Yes. Um, so th there's story-based upgrades. There's stuff you can pick up, and that's by, by, by picking up on cues, right? Um, there is also there is an upgrade path at the end of the game. Um, we are That part of the game is so deep in development, I'm, I want to be careful that we're not going to show any of those components. Um, but the upgrade path is after, uh, at the end of each game, you guys are going to get to pull cards from specific decks. Um, to upgrade your skills, your weapons, uh, your cool stuff, and that's going to be tied into your character. Um, the game is called Trudebung Legends, right? So that's actually going to, those uh, paths are going to lead you to your own character's legendary status, um, which case your character is actually going to get to retire, become a legend on the board, and then give a, a cool bonus to all the rest of the characters in that character's line. Awesome. Yes, sir. Are there, there friendly NPCs? There that you are NPCs. With? NPCs for those of us who do not uh, are not immersed in RP, uh, RPG lingo is uh, non-player characters. Um, there are a lot of personalities in this game. Um, friendly or not depends on your choices. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Will we see any divine? So um, the pantheon of uh, Truthvang has its own pantheon of of gods. Um, let me say that it's a game based on Norse mythology, and mythology is often divinely inspired, and that's all I will say about that. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm always decided. I'm just. Uh, I'm thinking about what to say. Um, <laughs> He's thinking about what he's allowed to say. Right, exactly yeah. right. So when I'm talking about scaling, I'm talking about how difficult the game is depending on player counts. We want to make sure that the game is a approximately equal, as much as we can with a, a granular system as we have, is approximately e equal difficulty depending on how many players. Um, how we accomplish that, I can't go into too much detail. Of course, there you played games always before, right? So there's the obvious numerical balances. Um, there are, there's also classically, right? The, the um, in lower player counts, the, the tension between splitting up and staying together is a little, I is measured a little bit differently. And we don't have rules for it. This is just all emergent, right? It's just how the game ends up. Uh, it's a game of the way how it plays out. Um, that is a l it just feels a little bit different than uh, multiple players, right? You get, of course, you get more you get more choices, more actions, more stuff to do, but also more cons uh, more threats on your person. Um, it is quite possible that we play a four ga player game. If Rhea joins my game, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, thanks, Rhea. You just made the game harder for me <laughs> personally because you <laughs> didn't deal with it. You're over there not drawing runes. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so s as we're sort of getting towards the end of it, um, if you guys don't mind trying to put all of your questions on Twitter, just that way um, we can try and get through as many of them as possible. Um, one more question I have is, will there be differences in the story depending on which characters are played? So this is from Captain Stitch. And I think you've touched on it a little bit about the characters having some interaction. Right. So... Uh, 
it's not not in here. The story is the story. Um, but the impact of the, the yeah the impact of the characters themselves. Remember, I said that there's two levels of this, right? There's the stuff that's going on in the board, which are the consequences of how you played earlier stories, of which the character progression is part of that. So in that way, it absolutely will matter. Um, and not only will it matter, it'll it, it will, it'll matter differently for each character. Each character has multiple uh, ways that their story can end, right? So um, uh, it's crazy replayable in that particular way. Um, but we wanted to make sure that the, I'm gonna just, because this is sort of a new thing that we're doing with this, I just want to uh, reiterate. Um, the You're playing a game of the story that you're playing now, plus the consequences of the stories that you've played before, weighing the two of those together and uh, trying not to compound too much of that. Right, of course, of course. And something that we haven't touched on a whole lot in this interview yet is, can you tell us a little bit more about sort of just like the larger team behind this game, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so yeah, there are five designers on this game um, it, because it's so massive, right? Um, so there's uh, myself, uh, Fel uh, Barros, and Guilherme Goulart, uh, who's been as many CMON Expos before. Um, that's where the game started, right? That uh, the design um, design came from. Now we have a ton of content creation and refinement. But like I said, this game's been going on for a long time, and we went through many, many, many iterations. Uh, we also have Fabio Tola, um, who is do, uh, who's helping a ton in uh, story plotting and uh, navigating this incredible matrix of stories that we put together. Uh, and Jordi Aden, who is uh, our actually our one of our newest employees. A, a brilliant mechanics guy uh he's been really good at challenging us on uh on the mechanics and the, the ui making sure that it's as uh polished and simple as possible and then can you tell me a little bit about the art the art is paul bonner i mean you guys know paul oh wait why, why talk when we can show that was, that was right. the nudge I was going for. But, I love know. Paul Bonner. He's <laughs> now we have other artists. Um, I want to be careful because uh, uh, we are we're we're working on that part of the game right now. It's the art coming in, so I don't want to make any mistakes. There are other artists working on the game that are super uh, are super awesome. Well, there's <laughs> cool. Um, Paul Bonner is uh, like. This this cover we actually had this cover before we had the game and that inspired a big a lot of our design right we were like oh my god like we got to make a game that epic <laughs> <laughs> right so it's like we sort of had this hanging out uh, hanging up um, uh, on our desktops and on our uh, some of us on our desktops some of us on our walls uh, to inspire us as we played and and what is it um, about the Trudvong lore or working with Riot that really um, brings this to life? Like, what would you say? Well, so I mean, the, the so it's interesting how we how we met them. Um, they So they, before I started at Simon, um, they, um, Simon, uh, sorry, come on, sorry, has a relationship with Riot Minds. Um, Riot Minds came to us with this really cool game. They showed us they had this successful Kickstarter. They got like $500,000 like years ago in a, uh, in a time when RPGs were not that well funded. Um, that intrigued us. We're like, wow, an RPG that like that had this dedicated a fan base, and we started going through it. And like, this is damn cool. Now, of course, um, you may not know this. I'm kind of a fan of Norse mythology, um, <laughs> and um, like we now this is so different from Blood Rage, right? Blood Rage is very, very trope tastic, right? This is like a, this is a totally different take, right? It's inspired by Norse mythology, but it is its own thing. Um, they have their own realized world. Like, th like knowing Norse mythology gets you in the door, and then it's as original. It's as original as Tolkien, right? Like, it's um, and it this the this writing style doesn't feel like it, but I get that epic mythic feel from it. Um, so now, they, now Riot Minds was. I mean, they're an RPG company, right? They they said like, we want you guys to make a board game. Like, we'd love to you guys to make a board game based on this world. And they were like, they're my favorite kind of licensor, right? Like they're, 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 they just kept uh, feeding us inspiration. They gave us cool material, um, but they, they were like, surprise us with cool stuff. So we're like, all right, well the best way to do that is we make a new story in that world. They were like, yeah, let's do it. Right. Um, so we've been going back and forth with them a lot and they've, um, they've helped enhance um, 
uh, we've enhanced our story. Like we came in with like, all right, we want to accomplish this. How do we do that with your background? Uh, and they would they'd come up and they make new stuff for us specifically that will work for the story that we want to tell. So it's been like I mean of course you know it's, you have to say nice things about your license, but like the like <laughs> I'm on, like these guys have been amazing to work with. Awesome, awesome, and and that's really cool to kind of see that sort of collaboration. I think that really ends up making the final the final product that much. That's right. At a higher I, level. I remember at Gen Con last year uh, mm -hmm. in August, we, we, we had a, m a private meeting where we had a much earlier version of this demo. It was not nearly as polished and refined. We played it with them. I remember, like, these are uh, um, th they're the two big like Swedish guys, right? They are, I mean, they are Scandinavian <laughs> in every sense of the word, right? So they're kind of like, they sit there at the table like, mm, tell me more about your game, right? <laughs> and we watched them play, and we, we got to see their eyes light up as they were playing this, like, this is so cool. And I was, uh, we had a slightly different system at the time, but I was, like, playing with them, like, what kind of decisions do you want to make? It's like, oh, I kill everything. I died. That's great, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, that's kind of, like, to a degree, of course, we make our games for fans. We want you guys to enjoy the game. But to a degree, we wanted them to be really, uh, we want them to be happy about it. And the more, like, sort of, like, childlike excitement we got out of them, the more we knew we were going the right direction. Awesome, awesome. And another question from Jacob Humphrey at Captain Stitch. Um, about how long do the sessions take? Or what? what's kind of your goal for? Uh, 60 to 90 minutes. Okay. Well, yeah. Some of them are pretty short. The demo is, like, 40 minutes. Right. I mean, this demo. Right. This is now. This is a preview demo. It's not included in the box. Um, sometimes the sessions are going to be 15 minutes because you're just going to die. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, a, s a, a session that you play to completion will be about 60 to 90 minutes. And there are some there are some big epics in there. Right. Um, sometimes you'll get the you know the mid the, the the mid season cliffhanger. Right. Those will be a little long. All right. And then Joseph Carruthers asks. Um, Joseph um, Carruthers. <laughs> will there be a maturity level in this game? And I don't, I feel like I can answer that, that there's no maturity involved in any of us. So, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you're asking, you're, you're, you're asking, <laughs> is there going to be an M label on our thing, right? Mature content label. It's not. Um, so it's, there is two degree, like, there's a maturity level in the sense that, like, it's not, it's not a totally black and white world and that you guys are going to be making you will make some decisions that y uh, you'll make some decisions that have some pretty dire consequences, but uh, it is safe for families to play. Absolutely, right? Even though, like, you are going to be killing trolls and stuff <laughs> like. If, if you're if you were comfortable watching, um, if you're comfortable watching Avengers Endgame, anybody that you're comfortable watching that with is going to be able to play this game. I'm not saying Thanos is in this game. <laughs> Thanos not confirmed. Hashtag. <laughs> Don't start stuff. <laughs> 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 I have to clean that mess up <laughs> later. <laughs> all right. So thank you all again so much for coming and for participating. And thank you for those folks out in the UK. I really appreciate all the questions coming in. If you still have questions, feel free to chime in with them um, on Facebook or Twitter with hashtag TrudvongBG. And we may be able to get to them in the next session, or if not, we might be able to answer them in some form later on. So please, 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 don't. We're, we won't feel overwhelmed. Please feel free to reach out. And we will have prizes and things for the folks who are participating in our questions online. And um, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. And have a great time here at Come On Expo. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Roar! <laughs> oh, and feel free to come up if you want to come take a look at the pieces. <laughs> Cannot say. Hello, everyone. So thanks so much for joining us online today. I'm super happy that everybody commented. We got some of your stuff answered online. Next up, we're going to have a panel about the Song of Ice and Fire and everything going on with that. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And then on Saturday, we should have three different panels. So we have our events on YouTube. We have our events on Facebook. So you can check out times for your region specifically. And thanks so much for everybody that joined us here today. We really appreciate it. And we will see you guys again shortly because our next panel is going to be starting here really soon, guys. Okay. Thank you so much for watching.